guys, it's Dave Santorelli from BreakingChartAlerts.com. Uh, we just finished up our Day Trade Friday today on September 11, 2020. Uh, so I just want to go over a quick couple things that we did. Number one, while we were on YouTube this morning, we jumped into a spy put. We ended up hanging on to that for a little bit. Let's take a look at the screen here. So on the right is spy. Here's the morning. We jumped in this morning probably about... see here we jumped in probably about I'd say about 950 to 10 a little after 10 a.m. there we jumped into those spy puts we saw that breakdown coming and you know it took a little bit but then it finally broke down and that first day trade we made on spy ended up closing out for a 72 percent return that was a great trade we ended up closing our snap trade for a 27 percent return and that worked out really well. So now what we're looking for, let's take a look at the SPY three month daily. We ended up doing a second uh, day trade on SPY towards the end of the day. We closed that out for a small loss. Uh, still end of the day, really great for us here. Now SPY ended up coming right down to that 330 that we talked about, that support area as you can see on the screen here. Q's did the same thing, but Q's actually pulled down and closed below that 50. So it's really important here. We're getting that 1020 cross. We're failing below support here, and we got to see next week. On Monday, Tuesday, it's a huge day. We get that third check mark for that confirmation. We're going to be entering into many more puts here, and we'll probably go out with the November monthly expo, take advantage of the election. I think we're still going to see a pullback from now until election time. So as you can see these candles here, in the last three days we've been opening up near the highs of the day and then the rest of the day we're just continuing to pull back here. That's what happened in the past three days to be honest here. So that's what I'm looking at and you can see that breakdown momentum forming. You could also see the size of the candles here. Look at the size of these candles on Q's, on SPY, compared to when we were breaking out. I mean, these candles here are only about a fourth of the size of these breakdown red candles here. And over on the SPY, it's like about six times as large of a candle as we were in breakout momentum here. So that's telling us a few things. Number one, that's telling us when we were breaking out here, that's more smaller trades coming in. Volume's a little bit lower, so it's probably retail traders pushing us up higher. These larger red candles that we're seeing, that's more likely the larger institutions, hedge funds, selling off their positions there because when you see large candles like that that's tens of millions or hundreds of millions of shares that are being sold here so i think we're going to continue to see that breakdown next week and like i said on spy here if we see a break below 330 we're going to be a little bit more aggressive with some spy puts get something probably about three months out till expo cues here same thing we're down below that 50 sma and we're going to be looking for that we closed out our Snapchat trade. We closed out, uh, I think we closed out something else here too. Oh, we closed out another SPY put at 407 for a nice profit in the main account there as well. So we ended up doing really well today with some day trades. It was a pretty slow day though, not much activity. If you look at it today one minute, it was just pretty much choppy. We took advantage of this downtrend right here in the afternoon around 12 30 we had that big breakdown and we ended up selling probably right around 1 30. Um, right near the lows of the day we sold that first spy put for that 72 percent gain there so that was a really nice setup so you only had a let's see here one two three you only had three really good setups in the breakdown momentum and the breakout momentum cycles today on spy so we took advantage of two of them um, and that was about it with spy and now if we take a look at a few other things here, like let's take a look, for example, Snapchat was up, what, 3% today? So Snapchat, if we go to the three-month daily, it's looking good, 1020 cross, still climbing within the previous candle's body. The wick got higher than the previous candle's body and wick uh, from yesterday there. So I think we're gonna see the next resistance right around 26 on Snapchat. So. If we start that breakout next week, this is going to be one of the stocks I definitely want to jump back into. It's been really good to us. We've made some really great trades on it, and I want to continue to take advantage of that. So then, well, what else we have here has been breaking out our Nike trade. We made a trade on Nike. We were up $1,800 on the Nike trade today, and uh, that was up close to 80% there for the day. 
So that's still breaking higher. Nike has earnings in two weeks. Uh, we have next week's expo on it. A lot of the members on YouTube were thanking us for the uh, Nike trade that we gave out on YouTube. And that one's still continuing to climb there. So might be adding into another Nike trade or doing something else. Now, here's something else going on next week I want you guys to keep in mind. Take a look at FedEx here. So FedEx had a big breakout today. FedEx has earnings next week. UPS does not. So this is something I like to call a piggyback trade, where we take advantage of a stock that's options premiums like FedEx for next week are going to be very expensive. Why? Well, we did a class a little less than another day on implied moves and implied volatility. So if you took a look at the option chain, they're expecting about an 11% move on FedEx, which could get those shares up or down about 25, 26 points, right? Now, here's the thing. The option premiums for FedEx are much higher because that implied move is high because of their having earnings next week. But we, we could go ahead and do a piggyback trade on UPS. It's the same industry, same sector, same type of company, but that doesn't have earnings next week. So we could go ahead and buy the options for UPS and watch that kind of piggyback off of FedEx earnings. Because usually if FedEx has great earnings, you know, UPS is going to follow. If FedEx has bad earnings and drops, UPS usually follows. So, you know, with it now, with everything with COVID going on, with it being the holiday shopping season, um, you know, FedEx, UPS, oil prices, gas prices have been low. That's one of their largest operating expenses for these carriers. Uh, that's way down there. So that's looking good. FedEx is still climbing huge here after market hours. But um, like I said, we could take advantage. We already have a UPS trade. We can make another one on that next week here as we get closer to FedEx earnings. And I'm really looking forward to it, guys. We had a great week this week. Uh, you know, even though the markets pulled back, those hedges were really important. And we're going to be having a class on proper hedging and portfolio management on Tuesday. And that class is going to be an advanced class, and that's going to be for our yearly elite members. If you're not an elite member yet, you could upgrade your account from pro or from trader to elite, and you'll have access to that class on Tuesday. And again, that class is only going to be accessible to a yearly uh, tr uh, pro elite member. So if you want to get signed up, you could upgrade your account. If you're not a member yet, you could get signed up as a yearly elite member. And that's going to include a year's member of our trading academy for beginner, intermediate to advanced classes. So really looking forward to uh, next week, guys. I'm really thinking that we're going to continue that pullback. We'll probably look at some gold as well. Let's take a look at GLD quick. GLD is the SPY ETF for gold shares. Um, I think that one could get an easy pop to 187.50, 190 from now until the end of the month. So once we break that 185 resistance on GLD gold, uh, we're going to start buying into that. So hope you guys had a great day, and I hope you guys have a great weekend. Make sure you guys stay safe, and uh, God bless. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys on Monday.